All right, so um, uh, we are going to talk about arrays today, but that's not the only thing. We are going to talk about functions too. Although it's for next for, for next week, but I'll start it today. Actually, two weeks from now, type of a thing, because this is the array. This is week four. The next week we will having structure types, but I'm starting the functions today. Okay, um, so. Through an example, we're going to explain what arrays are and uh, why do we use them. Um, so it can be, uh, be used from now on for so to teach arrays and see what are they good for and why do we need them. I'm going to start first developing something. Um, and uh, uh, throughout that, throughout the, the, the logic of that one, we're going to find the need of the array. And then we're going to bring the array in and hopefully understand what we're talking about. So it's very similar to the lab that you have done. So it's quite simple to understand. Um, what I want to do, I want to write a program that uh, helps you um, so uh, let's say that, uh, let's say that uh, we want to provide the average of the marks that are taken uh, in specific uh, quiz or text test test that we are doing in class and we want to find out what is the average of the, the marks in class. Okay, so somebody from Seneca comes to you and tells you when we, when we are doing the test, we want to provide the, the, the average of each test to the students and we want a program to, that does that for us. So we know how to do that. You've already done that for the temperature thingy, right? So this one, we're gonna try to make it better as it goes through. So what we are going to do is this. First, we are going to, uh, uh, think how it's supposed to be done. Um, in the other one, you had a nums that would tell you how many days of, of sampling you want to do. So you want to do an average through that one. This one is not going to be like that. We're going to actually ask the user, tell the user, hey, how many students do you have in your class? And then we're going to go by that. So the very first thing I need to know is how many students I have in class. So I'm going to create a variable, uh, number of students. OK, and I'm going to right off bat ask the, uh, uh, the user, how many students do you have in class? Um, but before doing anything, I have to have a title for my, for my program so the user knows what program is, is running. So, so I'm going to have a printf over here saying, what do we call this program? Program that finds the average of like um, mm, assessment statistics, assessment. Um, or uh, mark stats, Seneca mark stats. OK, and I'll go to new line. So that's the title of my application. Then after that, I'm going to say, uh, please enter uh, the number of the students. Number of the students in class in class. And for the other one, I go to new line. For this one, I don't go to new line because I want to get the number right in front of it. So I'll go scan f. And I get an integer and put it in where? OK, where do I put it? Line 7. I do put the integer in too? No, no, no. I want to catch you on this one. What do you call that? What do you call that? Address of. Ampersand? Did you just say ampersand to me? Yes. Bad boy you are. Address of. Remember what I told you? Do not say ampersand. Address of number of students. So, and that's the only place we need the address of for now. 
So any other place, it's just a variable by itself. But whenever you want scanf to read you some read something for you from outside of the world of the computer, so it's it's going outside of the body of the computer, it needs the address of the student to put it in there. So now that we have the address of the student over here, what do I need to do? I need to keep asking for the marks for that many number of students, right? So I need to go through a loop. I need an index for a loop. So I'm going to create a loop index. And I'm going to say loop index is set to 0. And while the loop index of mine is less than number of students, do whatever I'm supposed to do. And at the end, the end I'll add one to the loop index. Are we OK with this? So whatever we are doing in this blue area, whatever we are doing in this area, it's going to happen number of students times. Are we OK with this? All right. For now, I'm doing the program assuming user is sane. You did not do that. You actually were checking to make sure that the variables and values for the temperature entered in the lab are properly set. We are not doing that over here. We are assuming that the user is sane, knows what's do, what they're doing. Later on, we're going to fix that. So now I need to get the mark one by one. So I need the mark. So int uh, uh, current mark, OK? And I'm going to read that mark. So I'm going to say printf. Um, I, can, I, have, I, can, I, I can do it in two different ways. Either I can prompt in every single request saying, please enter current mark, uh, please enter mark number three. Please enter mark number four. Please enter. Either I can do that. Or what I can do is uh, um, or what I can do is simply at the top say, please enter uh, the student marks, and then show a row number, one, two, three, four, five, and I keep going to the number of students. I think that's better. Having a long prompt every single time, repetitive, it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to have the printf of, over here. So here, what I did was um, um, display uh, program title. And now in here, I am uh, getting the number of students number of students, and uh, now I am getting the marks for uh, getting the student marks. OK? Students' marks, let's put it that way, OK? And uh, and at the top, right over here, I'm going to say printf, please enter these many marks. Please enter 20 marks, or uh, please enter the 20 marks for the whatever assessment. And I'll go to new line. Because I don't want to get it in this line, I want to keep going and getting in uh, individual lines. Now, I'm going to print a prompt. So I'm going to say percent %d, and I'm going to show which one it is. So in here, I need to display the row number, right? So display uh, entry row number. So I want to display the entry row number. And I know that in C language, we start everything from 0. But the user sitting behind the computer doesn't know that. So we have to start with 1 for them. As a result, we're going to display loop index plus 1 so they know what's going on. So I'm going to say loop index plus 1. That's the row. Now I'll get this, uh, the current mark. So I'm going to say scan. Where did it go? Scanf. Percent D. Now in here, I'm going to put what is that? No, not an address. Read this. Ampersand current mark means you know it. I want you to tell it. Address of current mark. 
address of current mark. Okay, address of current mark. Okay, so it's got to put it in the address of the current mark. Now that it's done, now I have to f follow the, the business logic that I want to do. So I have to get that mark and add it to the total mark so I can find out what the average is afterwards. So I need a total mark, so I'm going to say int total mark. Okay, total mark is there. Um, and probably at the end, I'm going to need to show the average and show, yes. A line 16, it just changed. Which line is that? Oh, yes, 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 yes. I forgot to put that one. The funny thing is that I made the exact same mistake in the other one. It kind of repeats itself. So this is actually number of students. Thank you. OK. Uh, OK, thank you very much for that. Uh, so what I was talking about? Um, yeah, so I, uh, I need a total mark. So in here, I'm going to say total mark. Uh, plus equal, a current mark, and I'm adding to the total mark. Now, current mark, number of students, I do not need to initialize it. Why? Because the first time I'm hitting it, I am writing over it. There is no need. Loop index is loop index. I'm setting it to zero whenever I want to. That doesn't need it, uh, uh, initialization. Current mark is the current mark. So every single time I get, I'm overriding the old one. I do not need to initialize it. Total mark, however, the first time I'm hitting it, I am adding a value to the previously existing value, correct? As a result, I have to start from scratch, which means that has to get initialized, right? So set to zero. To start the total value, right? Now that I'm doing this, so every single time is done. So essentially, from here to here, this is why what my loop is. It's gonna print the row, it's gonna get the value, it's gonna do the total mark, add the loop index, go up, keep doing it over and over and over. How many times? Number of students' times. So when it comes down over here, this is the part that I am going to actually show what's going on. And say I want to have a precise average, like I want to be able to show 34.5% was the, so if I want to do that, I, I'm, I'm going to actually use a double value for the average. So I'm going to call it uh, mark av uh, marks average. Okay, so I'm going to say marks average is set to, I need to divide total mark by the number of students to get that, right? But because I want the, the outcome to be double, we know that if we are dividing integer by integer, the result of int is integer. If I say 5 divided by 2 and they're both integer, the answer is 2, not 2.5. Okay? I want to make it double, so at least I have to make one of the operands of this uh, 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 division operator. What is an operand? What is an operand? What is an operand? What is an operand? One of the sides of an operator. Yeah. yeah, the two sides of an operator, the things that is passed to an operator, 3 plus 5, 3 is an operand, 5 is an operand, plus is the operator. Okay, so now uh, I need to make one of the operands double so the outcome becomes double. So I'm going to say over here double, that is casting it temporarily, the total mark to a double, then I'll divide it by number of students, and as a result, the outcome will be double. If I don't do that, then it's not going to be a double value. Thank you very much. All right. So um, now I can actually print the value. I'm going to say printf uh, the average of the, the average of the class is, uh, average of the class for this assessment is percent point two LF to show two digits after the decimal point and then I'll go into the new line and I'm gonna show the marks average over here and life is beautiful, everything's fine. I run the program. Um, let's just run it for now and see if it's okay. Semicolon. Semicolon? Ah. 
stupid compiler. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Number of students in class, five. Then I'm going to say please enter the five marks for the assess assessment, 45, 78, 90, 80, and 23. The average of the class for this assessment is 63.20. Are we okay with this? This I'm not going to walk through because you've already done it. Okay, there's no problem with it. So you have done this even like you actually, uh, what you did over here inside this little while loop over here, you actually uh, validated the value of the scanf thingy coming in and uh, made sure that it's, that the mark is actually a valid mark. In, you, in your case, the temperature, right? I didn't do that in here. Yes. Oh, so you mean instead instead of having uh, yeah. integer total mark, putting a double total marks, not to cast it later on. Sure, but you use two extra bytes. I don't want to use those. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's just, you, if you would like it that way, then if I, I did that, then I couldn't teach ta casting, could I? Okay. All right, so that's essentially casting. Are we okay with this? The problem with this? So, zero, one. Mark's average. Now you're happy with this. You're going to go to the chair to say, there you go. I did this. It's ready to be used. And the chair says, I forgot to mention, uh, when you are printing the report and telling me what is the average, I want the original marks to, print it, to get printed too. So if they have 50 marks for a student, I want those 50 marks to be listed and then the average. And that's where we're going to say, oops, because you don't have them. Every single time you are getting a mark, right, you are overriding the old one. So if it's five marks, you need five variables. If it's 50 marks, you need 50 variables. Can't do. Because of that fact, we have the feature we have this power in C language and all other languages too to create a bunch of variables at the same time, okay? Which means now that I want to print them all at the end, I can actually create an array of marks. So say I want five marks, I'm going to create an array of five marks. And I'm not going to, I don't need to name it current mark anymore, I'm just going to name it marks, okay? So instead of current, because they're not going to go away, so I'm going to call it marks. And how do I mention how many I want? You put square bracket in front of it, and you mention how many. How do you know how many do you need? You ask the chair, Marilyn, how many students you have in a typical class in Seneca College? Marilyn says, 40 max. But if it's a joint session, that's going to be 80, right? So they've got to say 80, and it can't be more. You've got to say, thank you, 80. Then you come over here, and how many do you put? 160, because you don't trust it, OK? Because you know tomorrow is going to come, they're going to say, but the rules have changed. Now we have 50 in each class, going to be 100. Then you have to go find out your program, reset everything, go through stuff and headache. So you don't do that. You make some extra space for it. So if it goes more than what it's supposed to be, you still have space for it. Are we okay with this? By doing this, you are essentially creating 160 integers over there. The names of those integers are, so, let's say I have 10 integers. If I have 10 integers, the names of those integers are mark zero up to mark nine. But when you actually are requesting how many you want, you put the actual number. As I mentioned, how many fingers? Ten, starting from zero, going up to nine. Are we okay with this? That's why the index of each array starts from zero and always goes up to one less than the actual numbers you requested for. Because that's how it works. When you start from zero instead of one, the maximum becomes one less than what it is. Are we okay with this? So I'm going to put over here 160. So 
The rest of the stuff almost remains the same. So I'm going to say marks average is the same. Then I'm going to come over here, number of students, loop index. But in here, instead of actually putting it in the address of current mark, I'm going to put it in the address of marks. What do I put over here for the index? I'm going to put the index of the loop because when it's the first time, loop starts from zero, right? So it's going to put it in marks zero. And this is what the beauty of, of arrays are. You can actually put variable instead of its index. And whatever the variable of the index value is, that becomes the number of the integer that you want to, add, you want to access. So again, anything you want, so let me just, and, and you have to put the exact same thing. You see, nothing is different. It still has the address and everything. So, so what happens over here is this. Please, please remember this. <clears throat> when you are creating the array, the value you put over here cannot be calculated. It must be an exact literal value. It could be either you write 160, or if you want to play it nice, you know, you write a defined statement, and you write it max number of students, and you make that 160, and then you put that defined value in here. That you can do, but you cannot put a variable. Why we can do this? Because that's not a variable, it's a search and replace. The compiler, when it runs it, it searches for that, replaces it with 160, the exact same thing, no difference. But you cannot put over here I plus B, I plus J, you can't do that. You cannot ask the user how many students you have, then you say int marks number of students. You can't. You cannot at the moment of creation put a variable in there. It must be an exact value. But when you are using the elements of the array, you can put any type of a thing that generates an integer. That integer's value will be indexed. If you want to put over here i plus j minus c multiplied by 2, and that outcome is an integer, that is OK. If you want to even call a function in here, we're going to learn soon, that returns an integer, and that becomes your index, fine. You can do all these things. So you can put anything you want when you want to access the individual elements, as long as the outcome is an integer. And whatever the value of integer, that becomes the index of the element that you want to access. Am I making sense, or is completely gobbledygook? All right. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Now. So now I can actually come over here. So this is the report section that I have. Report. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. The report section. Now I can actually have another loop, exactly the same type of loop. So I'm just going to lazy. I'm just going to copy that and paste it right over here. Take that out. And let the row be there. Scanf we don't need. Total we don't need. All I need to do over here is to say, so in here I'm going to say the average of printf, the average of the following numbers, numbers, comma, New line. Now I'm going to show it row by row. Keep going like that, and semicolon would be nice. Now in here I'm going to say print. Oh, actually I'm just going to put the printf over here, and I'm going to put percent %d, and in here, comma, I'm going to put uh, marks loop index. Okay. Are we okay with this? And then I'm going to draw a line, printf, or let's not make it a sentence. I'm going to say student marks, student marks, 
like that. And in here, I'm going to say, uh, average. And I'm just going to delete that. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm going to go um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Hopefully that's kind of in the same row when it's printing it. We'll find out if it works or not. All right? So let's try. So now it's going to show, and it's going to show what the average is, and runs. So number of people, 5. Now I'm going to say enter assessment, 23, 78, 90, 67, 89. Oh, I forgot to go to new line. One more time. Control F5. 5. 5. And ta-da! So, oh, one mistake. I have to go one further, one lot ahead. So, student marks, one, two, three, four, five, yada, yada, and average like that. All right? Or we can even make it. So, we need one more space in here, uh, like that. So, let's put the percent D column over here and say dot, 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 dot. And dot. I don't know. Does that make sense? So again, five. Whoa, that's too big, but hey. That's that. Almost okay. I think we have something done over here. Are we okay? Now, this is... This is the exact same thing as the other one that we have. Zero, two, marks average with array, bad one. I didn't do anything sp ex explicit over here, just converted the exact same thing that I had, used the arrays for it. Well, think about the opportunity. When you have the array set up, it means when you get the information, the information is yours now. You do not need to uh, do everything at once and make your... So, so, for example, over here, you are finding the average the exact same time that you are doing data entry. So, you are saying getting the student marks but well, when you are getting the student marks, you are calculating your total average. So you are doing two things at the same time. We don't want that. We want the tasks in a, in, in a, in a project to be separated so we can think. Okay, so instead of doing that, I would just say getting the student's mark, or I'm just going to call it marks entry, marks entry. And in here, I'm going to say, uh, calculations. Okay? And now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to actually take this, take the whole thing that I had over here, the loop that I had. I'm going to copy it right underneath over here. Remove the data entry. Remove the printout. And just do the calculation in here. I have them already. Why do I have to mix them together? So I'll take this off here and go like this. Are we okay with this? Now they're going to say, um, thank you, that looks very good, but could you please write in front of every and each mark that is below 50 that this one is actually a failed test? Can we do that? Sure, why not? I'm going to go to the report. That's the section that I'm reporting, right? This is printing stuff over here and going to new line and all those stuff. Right after that one, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say, if, 
this Marx thingy that is getting printed now, if this Marx thingy that is getting printed now, is less than 50, then this person failed, right? I simply say printf failed. Oh, I'm in index mode. Okay, failed. But wait a minute, it's going to new line. I want it to be right after it, so I'm going to remove the new line over here. So it's going to print it, then it's going to say fail. If it is failed, then I'm going to say printf to new line. So the new line is going to happen after. So if the one I'm printing is less than 50, I'm going to say failed in front of it. As easy as that. And I'm just doing it in a report, making my report better without going through that hectic parts of what is happening over there. So now if I run this, I'll go 5. In here, I'm going to say 45, 67, 23, and 100. And nothing happens. Let's see what happens. Oh. I changed this wrong source code. Sorry. This is the one that I saved. This is not the program that I'm compiling. You see? This is Marx. This is the one that I put over this. So I have to just copy this. Go in here. Paste it over here. And get this one. And put it over here. Save this and close it. Sorry, I compiled the wrong one. Now let's do it one more time. So five. And there you go. That one is failed. That one is failed. The rest of them are not. Are we okay? Any problem down to here? So I've got to say, it would be nice if I know what was the least mark taken in class and what is the the best mark that I was, that was got in class. I want to find those two. How do we do that? This one is in calculation thingy, right? So I need to know what is the maximum mark. I need to know what is the minimum mark, correct? How do I do that? Easy. I need two variables for minimum and maximum. So I'm going to say int min, int max. So I have two marks. Now, how do I find out which one is max and which one is min? I'll go into the part that I was doing calculations, you see? This is the place that I am browsing through the, uh, through the marks and do the average thingy, right? So right over there, I need to find out which one is max and which one is min. How do I do that? It's very simple. I start by assuming that the very first one inside the array is the maximum and minimum. So I'm going to say max is set to min is set to marks zero. So what happens? Whatever is the first value, I'll consider that one to be minimum and maximum. Then on every single loop that I have, I'm going to examine that max and min to see if they are still max and min or not. How do I check that? To check to see if minimum is really minimum, I have to say if that minimum, if that minimum, how can a minimum not be minimum anymore if it's greater than something, right? So if that minimum is greater than the mark that I am just going through right now, then it's not minimum anymore. Correct? What is the minimum? The value that is smaller than minimum. That's the new minimum, correct? So I'm going to simply say, now that is the case, minimum becomes the one that is fitting that. Then I'll do the next check. I'm going to say if maximum is less than current mark that I'm reading, it means maximum is not maximum anymore, right? So I'm going to say update maximum to that value. Now I have maximum and minimum too. So as you see, I can change my program to whatever I want easily 
because I have all the data, nothing is lost. Or I have all the information. I can go back to my information, back and forth, and do whatever I want to do. I can even lay them uh, in an ascending order if I want to. Sort it from big to s small to big if I want to, or the other way. That's a little too difficult for, for the, the, the current moment of our understanding, but it's a, it's a fairly simple way to do it. So now I have maximum and minimum, so I'm going to say this is the class average. I'm going to say printf, lowest mark is percent %d, and highest mark is percent %d, and I'll go to new line, and in here I'm going to say min, max, and now I have a new feature added to this thing, so I can go control F5, and now I can say over here I have 5, in here I'm going to say 45, 89, 12, 78, and 100, let's say, and failed, failed, average is this one, lowest mark is 12, and highest mark is 100. Are we okay with this? Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? <laughs> All right, so simple. That's why we need an array. Now we need to talk about restrictions about the array, that, uh, things that we need to know about arrays. When you are dealing with an array, essentially what happens is that when you say int marks whatever, what the compiler does immediately at the moment that reaches over there goes to the memory and right in a piece of memory it starts uh, uh, allocating exact so essentially this will be 160 okay and marks will point to the beginning okay now from the first one how many elements I have to go further to, go to, get, to, the, to get to the first one? That's a stupid question. From the beginning, how many elements I have to pass to go to the first one? Seriously, can you answer this question? From the beginning of the array, how many elements I have to pass to get to the first one? It's not a trick question. If I pass one, it means I have to pass this one and then go to this one, correct? Isn't that the second one? No, he said one. One less than one is what? Zero. Zero. <laughs> okay, that's why indexes in, in arrays start from zero. So you are saying from where marks begin, how many elements I have to go further to get to the first one? Zero. How many I have to pass to get one to get to the first to the second one? One. That's one. That's why index one is actually index of the second element. You are actually mentioning how many integers I have to pass to go to the next one, and that's how it happens. Okay. The next thing, if you go outside of the boundary of the array, wherever it is, if you go outside of the boundary of the array, wherever it is, C has no way of knowing. You're just going to go outside of the memory that you allocated for yourself, you reserved for yourself. Therefore, you got to get uh, a message saying segmentation fault. You went out of your segment. And then it says core dumped. So what happens is that essentially it saves your program it's at, as exact stats that it is so you can debug it later on. So there is no way to find out. Compiler has no way to know if you're going off. That's why I had that question. Is there any way in your quiz, if you go outside of the boundary of your array, will you, you will get a compiler error? The answer is no. Most likely your program is going to crash, but compiler will not give you any warning. Now, the new IDEs that you have, if you explicitly mention like if I actually put over there marks max number of students 160 and in here I say marks 170 is set to something, it's going to give you a warning. It might not even compile because it knows it, you're telling it, but through no law, if it goes through a logic, there is no way to find out. Remember, that's very important to know. Um, 
What else? Another thing again, uh, we talked about it, so uh, that the, the fact that you can only put variables or any kind of calculation that results in an integer when you are accessing the elements of an array. When you are creating an array, the value that you put over there, the value that you put in here must be a literal constant value. It cannot be of any type, other type. It has to be a number, a constant number. Um, and that's kind of introduction to arrays, and we're going to go through it more and more as we go further. Any questions down to here? Suggestions? Go ahead. Where is what? Where is the array? This is the array. Oh, that's not the array. We are all. This is the array. And the array name is marks. Okay? So this is the array, and the array name is marks. So whenever you create, whenever you put square bracket at the moment of creation, you are actually requesting the compiler to create many copies of the same variable. In this case, an array of 160 elements. Yes. Uh, those uh, elements, uh, extra elements, don't feel this is zero. We'll, we'll get. I'll, I'll, I'll mention it in two seconds. How to initialize an array. I actually did not mention that. But it's not set to zero. They're all garbage. Why? Because that's how it is. <laughs> There's no reason behind it, because the sky is high. That's how it is. Zero. Elements, <clears throat> OK. Uh, something, actually, I did not mention this to the other class. See, this question came up. I forgot to mention this to the other class. Initialization of an array happens like this. And I'm going to mention this. So let's first, uh, let's first. Let's first uh, uh, put this in a new file. So 0, 03, uh, marks average with array dot C. OK. Syntax wise, syntax wise, when you create an array, so integer A. Five, okay? When you do something like this, it creates f five integers for you. Naming, names, a zero, a one, a two, a three, and a four, okay? If you, and it's not initialized, they're all garbage in there, okay? If you want to initialize them to a value, a literal value for an array is like this, curly bracket, and elements are separated by commas. So three, six, two, eight, and 9, which means a0 is 3, a1 is 6, a2 is 2, a3 is 8, and a4 is 9. OK? That's how it's initialized. Now there is, there is no garbage in there. It's going to be actually values in there. If you create an array and initialize them to less number of elements than what you have over there. So if I put over here 1.2 and 4.5. So, so now I have 10 doubles. D0 is 1.2 and D1 is 4.5. What happens to the rest? They are set to 0. Got it? So if you do not initialize at all, it's all garbage. As soon as you initialize even one of them, the rest will be zero. That's why if they ask you to create an array of, say, long integers called ABC and 1,000 of them and set them all to zero, all you need to do is to go this. Why? It sets ABC 0 to 0, and the rest of them will be all set to 0. Are we OK with this? 
but you cannot write a code. You cannot initialize them all automatically to 10. You can't do that. I cannot say have an array of, I don't know, uh, short integers and set and initialize them all to 92. You can't do that. For that, you have to write a loop and go one by one through them and set them to 92. The only thing you can set a big array of things if, is, is either to, to, to set them all zero or literally one by one set them to a value. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Beautiful. So first to initialized to the values and the rest to zero. All initialized to zero. Okay? Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. If I have a uh, like character name, and I'm going to put over here 20. So if I want to hold someone's name, then I have to, if I want to hold my name, then I have to do this. F A R, I know it's a pain, bear with me. D A D. Okay, so now what happens is that first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth elements are all set to F A R D A D, and the rest of them are set to zero. That's why we don't have a variable to put statements and word and stuff in. Okay? Now, they created an abbreviation for that. They created the shorthand for that. So you can either do that if you have lost your mind or you want to type too many things. Or in short, you can mention, you can do this. Line 8 and 9 are identical. They are exactly the same. No difference. Okay? Are we okay with this? Yes. So basically, like, the first one on line 8 is, like, you're actually setting each, like, value. So, like, name 0 is F, and then name 1 is, like, A, for example. Mm -hmm. But the second one, like, the compiler does it for you? They're identical. There is no but. In, a, in here, Name 0 is F, name 1 is A, and it keeps going, and name 6 is 0. Okay. okay? When I say 0, I don't mean character 0. I mean the, the integer 0. Remember, <laughs> attention! Remember, character is not a character. It's just a small integer. Remember that? And when you put single quotes or this, it keeps the ASCII code. So F is whatever it is. A is actually, I think, 92. It puts 92 in element, element, and it keeps going like that. OK? So those values are inserted into the character array. All right? Are we OK with this? Yes. Hmm? I think it's 2, 0, 20. Before, what is the space? It's, there you go, that's the space. <laughs> I don't know. Or if you want to add a space over here, here's the space. Oh. Stupid touchpad. I hate touchpads. Okay. It's never my fault. It's always the computer's fault. There you go. It's far, space, dad now. Okay? And now, because there are seven, that's eight. always remember the length of a string that you see, okay? the index of a terminating null. They call it terminating null. The reason they call it terminating null is that names and stuff, they are not one variable. Like when I say Joe, Joe is not one, one variable. It's actually three characters, J-O-E, right? 
So they cannot hold it in a variable. They always keep it in an array of characters. Now, to, to kind of mark the end as a standard, to know where the data ends, OK? They always end the data with a 0, not a character 0, the integer 0, which suits well. So in here, the terminating null of name 2 Name 2 is, because it's 6 in length, the index of the terminating null is 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The seventh one is 0. This one, I have 7 characters in it. The terminating null, the terminating 0 of that one is an index what? 7. Because I have seven characters. It's an index 7, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seven, the eighth one. Are we okay with that? All right. Are we okay? One, okay two. This standard, this con regulation is called in C language as a string. There is no string in C language. It's a term common between programmers that when I have an array of characters and I put printable stuff in there and I end it with an integer zero, that's a string. There is no string. We don't have anything called string. But they follow that rule and regulation. All right? And that regulation is actually within the C language. All right? Keep that in mind. It's just a regulation. Again, this is just an array. You can start from name to name to zero and keep going to whatever you want, all right? Are we okay with this? Any questions down to here? We'll talk about strings as we go through our, so, uh, so I'm not gonna start it right now because I don't wanna confuse the heck out of everyone. As, uh, when you come for the lab, at, again, at the first 10 minutes of the lab, we're gonna have a, uh, a session about strings. I'm gonna talk about it. I did not even mention string into the other class, but here it just came up, no, and, I, and I mentioned it. Any questions? Yes. Of course. <laughs> always, always. Are we okay? All right. My dear, please. This is this is week five, right? So structure types, it has nothing to do with functions. Functions we'll talk about today, actually. Are we OK? <coughs> Let's have five minutes break. And then when you come back, be ready. Be strong, because we're going to have lots of information going through, OK? I'm going to pause it. Please remind me to resume. All right. Functions. 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 Functions, 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 all right? Functions are essentially, you, you have already written a function. The very first function, the main thing that you're writing is a function. You are packaging your code in a block so it runs. The first function, the, 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 the function which, from which everything begins is called main. That's why you call it main and you can't call it anything else. Because when C compiler wants to start the code, it starts from main and from there goes to many other functions that you are using, like printf, scanf, and all these things. While, the, while for loop, those are not functions. Those are commands that you are using, your C commands. All right? How do we write a function? Easy. For example, display program title. The title of your program is a separate task by its own. So I'm not going to put it over there commenting it like that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually write a function that, let me just make sure this compiles. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to actually write a function. So the function that I'm writing, I wanted to print the program title, so I'm going to say program, oh, title, okay? This program title will not receive anything from any other function. Remember, 
When you are talking about receiving and returning, you are talking about functions talking with each other. You are not talking about communication between inside of a computer and outside world. So user entering something on a keyboard, that's not function receiving anything. Printing something on the monitor, that's not function returning anything. Receiving and returning are two functions talking with each other. Okay? So this program title, its job is just to print something. So it doesn't receive anything from the any anywhere, and it doesn't return anything to anywhere. And it has a body. What is its body? We've already done that. So I'm just going to take it over here, X, and put it right over here, V. And in here, I'm going to say uh, program. Oh, oh, functions start with lowercase. My apologies. That's a naming convention. Program. Title. That's a new version of program. All right. So what happened? Nothing. I just written a function, and I'm calling that function in my program. If I walk through this beautiful program of mine, I press F10 to run the program, right? That's how we work. So press F10, and it starts and goes to the very first executable command. That is the beginning of your main, right? It stops right there. Now I'll put this one at the corner over here, and I'm going to bring the output at right. And move this to right. OK, so now I press F10 again. It goes to the next executable command that is setting initializing total mark to 0. This is garbage. Garbage. You see, and I, as I'm holding it over here, you see the garbage inside, right? Garbage. And I'll come to marks. It's a lot. So I'm going to come over here and expand. 0 garbage, 1 garbage, 2 garbage. And it goes up to where? 100. And I can keep going. Yay, 160 integers. OK, yep. Ah, that's it. Okay, so sorry, 159 is the last index for it, right? Remember? Okay, good. And they're all garbage. Whoops. So I press F10, that happens, and I come over here. Now I get to program title. It wants to run it. If I press F10, what is F10? F10 means step over. I don't want to step over that function, I want to go into it and see what happens. So I press F11, that is step into. So as you see when it comes over here, F11, it goes up where the function is and calls that function, runs the function. As soon as the function is finished, it goes back exactly where it was called. That is there. And then continues. So essentially, I put what I wanted to put inside that program title in here, and now I don't need to, need to even comment it because I have a beautiful name for it. It says program title. Everybody knows that this function is doing program title for me. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Yes. Uh, you said two functions when you put when you put the void. Two functions doesn't talk to each other. Yeah, they don't pass any information to each other. So I have two functions in this program. One is called main, the other one is program title. And main is calling program title. Calling. It's not talking, it's not passing anything. I'm going to tell you, could you please come here? You will come. You are not giving anything. Can I have that bottle of Coke? You returned it to me. Oh, cold, and I'm very thirsty. Are we OK? Do we understand this? All right, so that's the thing. If I call you to come here, you're going to come. And I'm going to say, can you dance for us? You're going to start dancing over here. Everybody see you dance. Nothing happens. You are doing your dancing. Everybody's seeing you are doing your job. But as soon as somebody say, can I have your glasses? You take your glasses off and give it to someone. That's returning. OK? And if I give you 10 bucks to dance, then you are receiving something from me. Otherwise, you're not. OK? Sorry about the dancing thing. I wanted to say some performances like that was a th so <laughs> thing that came to my mouth. mind. OK, are we OK? Yes? So when you have like void program title void, it that essentially means it's not receiving anything? And it does returning anything. And it returns zero or no, nothing. Returns nothing, not returns zero. It doesn't re Returning zero, it's returning something. It's returning an integer whose value is zero. Okay. <laughs> 
Exactly. Because it's void, it says don't return anything. It won't return anything. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with one? Are we OK with two? Sold. OK, next thing. Let's stop the execution. Next thing, what do I have here? I'm saying, please enter the number of students in class. Getting the number of students in class. That's a separate task of its own. What does it do? It prints over here, please enter the number of students in class. Returning, receiving, no. Then it gets an integer from the user. Is it returning, receiving? No, because it's talking to the user, not me. But then I need that value to do something with it, right? So I have to get that value out of it. So the function that I want to write for getting the student numbers in class has to return something to me. What does it have to return? It has to return the number of students. What is the type of number of students? What is the type of the number of students? Everybody. Integer. integer, thank you. It's integer, so it has to return an integer. So when I want to design that function, I'm going to say the function name is get number of students. It does not receive anything from me, but it's going to get the number from the user and return it to me. So it returns an integer. Whenever you see, for now, for now, whenever you see a function is returning something, immediately create a variable of that type and return it. Then fill in the blanks. Remember what I told you about style of programming. How do you program? I told you don't write crappy code and when you want to hand it to me, make it nicely organized. Do or write organized code from the beginning. This is what I'm saying. This is returning an integer to me, right? So in here, I'm going to say int value return value. Now, my job over here is to find out what that value is and return it. How do I do that? I've done it already over here. I'm just going to copy this, getting the number of students, x, and I'm going to put it right over here. So getting the number, please enter. And what does it get? It gets the value and returns it. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? Now, how do we use this function? In here, I'm going to say number of students is equal to, is set to get number of students. OK? So let's execute it and see what happens. All right? Run, forest, run. All right, where is the other one? Ah, this feature, I have to do it like this, and then that, and then bring it over here. There we go. Oh, too much, too much. F10, I start it. I know all those values are. I know program. See, now I have tested program title. I don't want to go into it anymore. That's why I'm pressing F10, which means it's going to step over. Pa! It went over, printed, uh, printed over here. Seneca marks yada yada yada, right? Okay, now what's the next step? Now in here, it wants to do this assignment, right? Because it wants to do the assignment, it has to evaluate the right side, correct? What is the right side? It's a function. So it has to go and execute the function. That's why it goes right into the function. Over there, we have a value that has garbage in it. It says, please enter the number of stuff gets the value from me, and I'm going to enter 5. I I'll hit enter. What is the value? 5, correct? Then it's going to return that 5 where it was called at line 29. Oh, it goes right out. So it comes over here. What is the va value of that one? Garbage. But it's not finished yet. As soon as I complete it, that 5 will overwrite the garbage, and the garbage becomes 5. Hence, I have written a function that returns the number of students. Are we okay with this? Yes. The only thing that's gotten me so confused was like, uh, if all random for when I do 
What, 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 what? Like it's the, all. The function, Let me just see if I'm recording. Yeah. Recording. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I got confused. One more time, one more time. The program ran before we added the functions. What, like, uh, what benefit do we get out of doing this? Is it to separate them? I don't know. What's the benefit of organizing your room? You can just put everything in a pile and try to go through it. Or organize everything. Put everything that belongs to a part to a piece. It might not look very... That's just a comment. OK. Could you please, this is no, um, I don't want to pick on you on this, yeah. but this is a typical first semester college student. Yeah. Think bigger, for heaven's sake. Don't think that you're writing a program that is 15 lines. Just assume you're writing an accounting program that is going to be 15 million lines of code. You want to do it all in one function? 15 million. So you have to. Or exactly. So, so I cannot show you the 15 million lines of code right now. I have to start with one. That's why it doesn't make sense. But think big. Learn how it works and then use it. And be obsessed about this. Have OCF be obsessive compulsive disorder. You have to have that when you are writing a program and functions. Anything that you see, it has a separate goal of its own, immediately separate it into a function, no matter how small it is. Anytime you see your code is growing bigger than you don't like, package it and put it in a function. Make things small. A main program, a good main program, is usually three or four lines of code, and that's it. Because it just calls this the backbones of your application. And each one of those backbone calls their own backbone. And it keeps going like that, and it grows like a tree. Have you ever seen a tree with five trunks? No, it's only one. And from there, it goes to branches, the branches, the branches, and then you're going to have a huge tree. That's how your program is supposed to be. All right? Does that make sense to everyone, hopefully? All right. Next one. How much time do I have? 15 minutes, nothing. All right, let's stop. OK, next thing I did over here, there you go. I'm, I'm getting student marks in here, right? I don't want to get student marks like this. Getting a student mark is a separate thing, right? So I'm going to write a program over here. It's a very simple one, actually. I'm going to say int get mark, all right? It doesn't receive anything from anyone. And then what does it do? It has a value. It returns that value. And what is that value over here? Is getting the student mark. Where is the student mark? There you go. Copy. Paste. Copy. All right. So get mark gets the value and returns it, right? It's an integer, correct? It is, looks very simple, right? But you'll see it's going to be better soon. You'll see why we did this. Now in here, I'm going to actually take that thing off so we don't need the scanf anymore. And this will be equal to get mark. Are we OK with this? So it, so it was just a scanf, right? But now it is a comment of its own. You are saying marks loop index, this element of array will be set to get mark, which means you are getting a mark. You haven't done anything in this, just a scanf. But the fact that you put it in a function, it added a comment, a logic to your program. Number two, functions are getting, when you have functions, like too many functions at the top, doesn't make sense to have the main function at the bottom. If you put these things at the bottom, if I actually take this up, oh, sorry, if I actually take these off and put it at the bottom of the program, compiler is going to get confused. Because compiler comes from top to bottom, right? At the top, I said over there, there is a standard input output. That's why scanf and printf are known. It knows where they are because I introduced them. Did I introduce these functions that I have written? No. So the compiler is going to tell you, the compiler compiles, comes to here, says program title. So what the heck is a program title? I don't know what it is. You have to tell me what it is. You have to introduce it to me. <coughs> so
So how do we introduce functions to another function? Before that function begins, you put only the names of those functions. And that's it. Void program title void, int get notes void, int get mark void. So when it comes over here, you're telling to the, to, to the compiler, hey, if you got to this function call, don't panic. It's there. You're going to get it. So compiler compiles the function call, and when the time comes to create the executable, now it looks, is the function there? Yes, fine. If it's not, then it's going to give you an error. So compilation will happen properly. It's got to be go to linking if the function is not there. So if I, if I even remove all these functions, take a look at it. I'm just removing the whole function. So there is no function in here, right? If I go to the solution and only compile this, it will compile successfully. Even the functions are not there. Because you are saying just translate, don't make the function call. But to actually run it, if I now run this program, it's going to give me problems. It's going to say link unresolved external symbol program, symbol program title referencing function main. What happened? You told me there is a function. You promised me, but it's not there. The good thing is that you don't even have to put the functions in this file. You can put it in some other file. I can create another file in here to organize my code. That's 15 million lines of code that I was talking about as you're looking at cell phone. That uh, 15 million lines of code doesn't have to be even in one file. You can have it in separate files. So in here, I can actually create a new file. And let's call that marktools.c. So marktools.c is another C program. And I'm going to put all the functions in there. These functions are using printf and scanf, so they need their own introduction. OK? But they are in a separate file. Now, if I want to actually, if I compile and run this now, it works beautifully, although they are in two separate files. And if you want to actually compile this on matrix, then you have to say gcc dash wall uh, prog dot c, and then say mark tools dot c. So you tell the compiler, these are all the files that the codes are in there. So it compiles their success, compiles success, then it links them together, and you have your executable. You can have 55,000 files, organize them perfectly. Are we OK down to here? Now, in here, I'm doing lots of get integer. I did not, <clears throat> I did not make this a foolproof program. If, the, if, actually program uh, if actually the user over here says, five over here, what's going to happen? It's going to go garbage. Everything's going to go bananas. You, we assume that the user is sane. I don't want that. So I'll go to my mark tools thingy, and I'm going to write a new function. I'm going to call that function get int. Get int does not receive anything from anyone, but receives an integer from the user and returns it. But its job is to only get one integer and make sure it keeps the user responsible for a correct integer entered. How does it work? When you are actually entering an integer, when you are actually entering an integer, so let's say I am going to enter the number, <clears throat> I want to enter number 20, OK? So I want to enter number 20, all right? If I want to enter number 20, I want you to analyze this. Who's, who, wants to, who wants to be my next victim? OK. Analyze this for me. If you want to enter 20, what do you do with your keyboard? Zero. Not a good analysis. Someone else. <laughs> Someone else? OK, you tell me. <laughs> go, 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 go. And then enter. Oh, man. And then enter. So essentially, three keys are entered into the keyboard, right? Two, zero, and enter, which means what are the values that are going in there? The values that are going in there are actually the character two, correct? Whatever the code for character two is, 
correct? Then it's going to be the character zero, whatever it is, and it's going to be backslash n. Three things are going to go into the computer, correct? So if user is an idiot, and 99% of the time he or she is an idiot, when you are saying to enter 20, what they do, they actually enter 20 and then lots of garbage after that, and then they hit enter. What happens now? First two is going to go in, then zero is going to go in, and then some garbage, which is not an, in, an enter key, correct? So we have a chance to find out if the user is actually an idiot. How do I do that? In here, again, I want to get an integer. I'll do it exactly as I said, integer value int and return value. But to see if the user is actually entering the things properly, which means after entering the data, it's ending the information with an enter key, I need to, what is enter? It's new line, correct? I have to actually create another thing called new line, another variable. Then in my scanf, I'm going to go scanf. And in that scanf, I'm going to say percent %d. Immediately, I put a percent %c after. Now, I'll put that percent %d thingy in the value. And I'll put that percent %c in new line. Correct? You have done validation before. Correct? Now what can I do? I'll check it out. I'm going to say, OK, user entered while. I have to see if it's wrong. If that new line is not actually new line, what does it mean? User is an idiot. Right? So we have to fix it first. If that new line is not new line, what does it mean? If that new line is not new line, what does it mean? So we ask for 20. User actually writes 20 and hits enter. OK? Scanf wants to read t as an integer. It can't, right? Pooh, it fails. So neither value nor new line is set to anything, correct? But all this garbage is still in the keyboard, correct? So if that's the case, if this one is not new line, the very first thing I need to do is to go through every single key hit in the keyboard and eat them and throw them away. How do I do that? I repeat the exact same thing. So I'm going to say, while, since user is an idiot, I'm going to say while new line is not equal to new line. I know there is a light, there is light at the end of the tunnel. I know there is a backslash n at the end. So all I do over here, I say scanf percent %c into the address of new line. And to make sure that this thing happens at least once, I start this thing with a garbage thing. So I'll put something like x in there. Because the very first thing I'm doing, I'm checking a variable, right? I have to make sure there's something in there. So now, user is an idiot, so flush keyboard. Wait a minute. It looks like this is something of its own, right? So I'm going to take it off. I don't want to get bothered with two while loops. I'm going to take that off. In here, I'm going to say void flush keyboard void and I'm going to just write that in there character new line set to x that's my flush keyboard it's going to flush it so in here I'm going to say flush keyboard so if user is an idiot first wipe out the keyboard then say what printf Invalid integer. Try again, you idiot. No, I'm not going to say you idiot. OK? All right? And then what do I do? You have done this before. You have done this before. What do I do? I repeat exactly the same entry again. So what happens? I said, I clean the keyboard. 
give him another chance. Does it again? If it ends it with new line, this is a new line, right? Because it's new line, it breaks out and goes out, life is beautiful, value is returned. If it is not, it keeps doing that over and over and over and over. And now all I need to do, wherever I'm getting an integer, I'm going to call that function instead. So in here, I have a scanner for value. I'm going to say value is set to get int. In here, I'm getting the mark, right? I'm going to say value is set to get int. Correct? Now let's run the program and see what happens. When I run the program, I just made the core of my integer getting a function that is foolproof. So user goes bananas, hits enter, invalid. Try again. User says five, wrong. User says five, I said, wrong. And the finally understands he has only altered five. Now we are good. That becomes a foolproof application that doesn't let the user go. Not only that, <laughs> okay, I forgot that. But take a look. I entered 567. That's not good, right? I have three, two minutes. Let's do this. So now this get mark that I had, I can do the exact same thing, can't I? Okay, so in here I'm going to say while a valid mark should not be less than 0 or greater than 100, right? So if value is less than 0 or value is greater than 100, you've already done that, right? I don't need to flush the keyboard because I know they cannot create garbage anymore. I have the foolproof thingy. All I need to do is to say printf, printf, can I write printf? Printf invalid mark. Try again. And this time, I'll do another get int again. Value is set to get int. The exact same logic, right? Now I made my get int better. Do I change anything? No. Now if I run it, everything works perfectly. In here, I'm going to say 5. In here, I'm going to say 45 correct. This is invalid integer. I'm going to put 400 something. Invalid mark now. Now I'm going to put 78. Now it lets me go to the next one. So I not only am checking to make sure that the integer is actually entered as a proper integer, in the next function, when I wrote that function, it was only one line. It didn't make sense, right? But because I, I put it in a module, the task, now I can go explicitly to, do, to that task and make that task intelligent. And because I'm using that function wherever I want to get a mark, my program suddenly becomes intelligent. That's the benefit of writing a function. Today, we're not going to talk about how to pass information to the function. That's not important. For now, let's just do this. So if I were you anywhere you want to write a f something to get an, a number, double, you do the exact same logic. Go, go ex as exercise at home, try to do this with doubles. Get a proper double and see how it works. Get a proper GPA to make sure it's greater than 0, less than 4. Okay. Have yourself a beautiful day.